Gregory Keane continues the story from his car by the Prince's Highway, 120 miles south of Sydney. At midnight last night, Carlotta and Huberman's hideout could have been anywhere, literally anywhere. But now, at 10.15 in the morning, we know it's out of Sydney, somewhere not far from the coast road leading south. Mike Guzik stole a car last night and crashed it here this morning. I had the news from Murray, so I hauled cuts out of a deep sleep, and we made for this area as hard as we could go. Guzik's still about. He can't have got far on foot since his accident, and the police are watching southbound traffic at a punt at Bateman's Bay. Cuts and I are at a little town on the road, tucking away some breakfast and enjoying it. But if Felix Huberman heard the broadcast warning about Mike Guzik, I doubt very much if he's enjoying his. Switch that thing off! Switch it off! Oh, I have to listen to that abominable racket all day! You heard the broadcast, didn't you, Felix? Of course I heard it. Well, then do something. Say something. Don't just stare. There's not a chance in a million of music making it to Cam Camaray now. Why do they say he's at large in, in whatever area it was? He had Peter White's car? They must have crashed it. Carlotta, how long could we live on a cruise out at sea? What do you ask? I don't like it. They must know music was heading south. Gives them a lead on this hideout. If we were to pack up... Louis, get outside and watch the road coming down the hill. Leave the dog, just go yourself. If you want anything, we can call for. Okay. Now, as I was saying, if we were to pack up here, get rid of the others and leave no traces behind us, why shouldn't we put out to sea on the cruiser till Logan can pick us up with a tanker for Panama? No. Well, it's not safe here, Carlotta. It is perfectly safe here. Mike Guzik will never allow himself to be taken alive. I have told you over and over again. We are safe here. And if we leave in the cruiser, how are we to keep in touch with Gordon Langley and make our final arrangements? Well, we can make them before we go. Unless we can communicate with Langley, anything might happen. The tanker could be overdue. It could be late leaving. It could be held by its agents or diverted somewhere back to Panama. We could be stunned at sea. We could miss the tanker altogether. Your idea is absurd, Felix. I will not consider it. Oh, perhaps you're right. But I can feel them closing in. I can feel keen closing I in. I have nothing but content for your fears. We could be on the moon for all Keen knows. I wouldn't mind if I could get at the fellow. I'm good for anything, you should know that. But it's the idleness and the waiting that wears me down. Soon there will be work to do. Louis and Vessel will not be coming to Panama, and we have to consider the girl, Helen Needham. Just once, Carlotta, why shouldn't we leave her here? She doesn't know where she is. We could leave her and she'd never be able to tell them what became of it. She and Mendel were blackmailing us, were they not? Mendel paid. So will she. The letter from Nick Barnes is still in Melbourne. It was addressed to Mendel himself. It will lie in the Elizabeth Street post office for months. Months in which we will have been travelling to Panama and from there, who knows? So you want to leave no one behind us? We have come this far by the same methods. Now is not the time to change them. Louis Verfel, Helen Linden, and Guzik, if it gets here, all must go. Mike Guzik, last of all. That still leaves one other, Carlotta. I will make my decision in the hour before we depart. Not before. I'll never understand you. You were not taken from the slums of Scutari, where I spent my childhood. You did not grow up as I did, knowing the meaning of hunger and cruelty and desperation and fear. You were never herded like cattle by mounted men with a lash, nor culled from the herd like an animal by officers with arrogance and power. Only money can blot out the things I remember, Felix. Money. It is my god. I worship it. Now I have money at last. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds. I am going to escape with it, and nothing will stand in my way. We have nine days to go, Carlotta. Logan and his ship aren't due for nine days. Keep me here, I can wait. I'm almost happy. Neither he nor the police will find us. It would take a regiment of men to hunt us down if they searched every house between here and Sydney. You and I will be on that ship, Felix. You and I, and none other.
Well, there it is, cuts the punt at Bateman's Bay. Rather an attractive spot. Too bad we can't take the day off for some fishing. Oh, uh, pull right off the road. We'll have a yarn with the constable on the spot. He's waving us to a stop anyway. Morning. Good day. My name's Keane. I've just driven down from Wandandian. Ah, yes. I left Inspector Murray there. I believe you mentioned my name to your sergeant on the telephone this morning. Oh, yes, that's right. I haven't caught up with this bloke Guzik yet. Well, not unless they picked him up after I left Murray. If they had, I wouldn't still be watching the punt. <laughs> oh, no, I don't suppose you would. Um, had much traffic this morning? Not much. A few locals, one or two heavy transports. Not much. Mm. I suppose most trunk traffic takes the inland highway. Most of it, yeah. Uh, what about the heavy transports? They'd be a likely chance for Guzik to get through, wouldn't they? They're just the ones we watch. I've noticed they have to take the hills to crawl. It'd be easy for a chap like Guzik to run along behind, loosen the tarpaulin, and climb up inside. Yeah, but that's the first thing you look for, a truck with a covered load and a couple of ropes hanging loose at the back. If you got on a truck like that, you couldn't do the ropes up again. Not from inside. I hadn't thought of that. I think you know more about it than I do. Do these uh, interstate trucks carry two drivers? Sometimes. What, while one drives, the other chap takes 40 winks, eh? They work it out between themselves, I guess. Why? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Look, um, do you mind if we hang about for a while? If Guzik's heading south, he has to come through here, and we've an hour or two to fill in. Suits me, if you want to. We won't get anywhere. Come on, Cuts, we may as well take a seat in the car. After you, Budger. Right. Well, I doubt very much if Guzik slipped across the punt yet. We know what to watch for, so keep your eyes skinned, Cuts. We want a big, heavy tractor-trailer unit loaded to the axles with something else in it besides. This one, maybe. This one's going slow uphill. Big truck with only one driver. Yeah, only one driver. Others is having two. Here she comes, going no more than walking. When she comes level, he don't see me in the trees. Let him get past a little so he don't see me coming. Now! What the... What the... Hey, what are you doing, mate? What's the idea? I invite myself for a little ride, fellow. Take a look at what's pointing at you. You're gonna give me a little ride? You're Mike Goosey. You... How you know my name? How you know... Uh, look, mister, look, I, I, I don't know nothing. I, I didn't ask for any trouble. How you know I'm Mike Guzik? Well, see for yourself. I got a radio in the camp. There's a broadcast about you this morning. What does she say, fellow? To watch out for you. You're between Nara and Bateman's Bay. Look, will you get out of my truck? I don't want trouble. If you're a good fellow, you don't get no trouble. But if you're not, you get plenty. You're going long way, huh? Yeah, but... It's your old army coat up here behind the seat. Yeah, but... I'm putting it on me. She's a little bit cold. Now you listen, bright boy. I'm keeping the gun close here. If anyone says stop, you stop. But you're telling them just what I want. All the time guns pointing at you when you talk. And if they don't believe you, bright boy, she goes off. They'd better believe what you're telling them if anyone says stop. What's this coming up behind, Cuts? Ah, a heavy transport covered. Big wide cab over engine, John. Now watch it. Constable's waving it down. Two drivers aboard, eh? Listen to every word they say. Good day. What's the trouble? What's the holdup? Police here. We're looking for a fellow who might be trying to make a run south. You seen the big scarface chap on the road? Oh, that'd be that bloke Guzik. I heard about it on the air. Oh, no fear, not me. Haven't seen a thing. And I don't want to. Hold it while I check your ropes at the back. I got this rig loaded down so heavy, if a bee settled on me, she wouldn't get up the hills. You won't find Guzik with me, mate. Well, no one's been at you from the tray. Your tarpaulin's battened down tight. Look, can I get going? i got to shed your... I'm an hour behind. Now, hang on a minute. Who's this curled up in the front seat with you? Ah, uh, me mate. He's been driving all night. I only just took over. Now, let's have a look at him. 
What you got the coat over his head for? Ah, oh, fair go, fair go. He's only just gone off. You'll wake him and he won't get to sleep again. Well, I ought to take a look. Oh, now, fair go. You try driving these rigs all night with 50 tons behind you. He'll have to take over when we cross the border. Let him sleep. Well, I'll get her going then. You ought to know your own mate. And don't sink the ruddy punt. Those drivers are like cats. They have to be. If that other driver was sleeping, he'd wake the instant they pulled up. After them, cuts. Mike Gilzik's in the cab of that truck. We can take our man now or at any time, but we're not going to. We're not even moving in on the hideout after he's shown us where it is. We're going to close their ways out, one by one. We're going to seal them up tight so they can't move. And then we'll face Huberman and Magnani again, Cuts and I. We'll have them, like rats in a trap. <laughs> Does Guzik lead Keen to Cape Camaray? Listen for the next intriguing chapter of Deadly Nightshade.